In this video, we will practice multiple choice questions about modeling functions. I will show you how to use your graphing calculator to find the line or curve that best fits the data. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.13 and 1.14. If you appreciate this content, please show it by hitting the like button. Number 1. The electromagnetic force between two particular particles is related to the distance between the particles. This relationship is modeled by the function f, where f of d equals 3.6 over d squared for distance d measured in centimeters, and force f of d measured in newtons. What is the average rate of change in newtons per centimeter in the electromagnetic force if the distance between the two particles is increased from 2.3 centimeters to 3.1 centimeters? Recall that in general, on the interval from A to B, the average rate of change of any function f is f at B minus f at A over B minus A. This is really just the slope, and this is like rise over run, y minus y over x minus x. So on the interval from 2.3 to 3.1, the average rate of change will be f at 3.1 minus f at 2.3 over 3.1 minus 2.3. F at D is 3.6 over D squared, so F at 3.1 will be 3.6 over 3.1 squared. Similarly, F at 2.3 is 3.6 over 2.3 squared, and then in the denominator we still have 3.1 minus 2.3. This problem is calculator active, so we can just type this entire expression into the calculator. Just type it in like this and hit enter. Kabam! We need three decimal place accuracy, so negative 0.382. So the answer is A. Number two, the table gives values of average life expectancy in years for a child born in a given year in the United States. A linear regression is used to construct a linear function model L, where T represents the birth year, t equals 0 is the year 2000, and L of t represents the life expectancy in years. For what year does the model predict the life expectancy of a child born in that year will be 83 years? Let's start by entering this data into the graphing calculator. Just hit stat and then enter for edit. Let's enter the input values as L1 and let's enter the output values as L2. Be careful, we will not enter the years like 2000 and 2004. We are told that t equals zero is equal to the year 2000, for example. So we will enter zero and four and eight and 12 and 16 and 19 for these years. When your data is typed in, it will look like this. Now let's find the linear regression model by hitting stat switching over to the calculate menu, and then choosing one of the linear regression models. It doesn't matter which one, I'm going to pick option four. Before I hit enter to create the regression model, let's go down to where it says store regression equation. If we type Y1 right here, then the calculator will automatically store the model as Y1 in the Y equals area. So hit vars, y vars, enter, and enter for y1. Now when we hit enter twice to create this regression model, if we look under y1, we see that the, the regression model is here entered as y1 for us. Remember, our goal is to find the year when the life expectancy will be 83 years. So we need to find where L of t is equal to 83. We just made a model for L of t and we put it into y1. So we need to find where y1 is equal to 83. We can find that using the calculator if we let the right hand side of the equation be y2. So if we put 83 right here and graph both of these equations, the intersection will be the solution that we're looking for. 
We need to adjust the window though. So looking back at our data, notice that the input values are up to 19 so far. We don't know how far they will go, but they might be as big as like let's say 50. Um, look at the output values. They start at 76.75. They need to go up to at least 83. So I'll probably put in a, a larger upper limit like 90. So hit the window button and uh, we will let the X min stay zero, but let's turn the X max into 50. Uh, for the Y min, it's not going below 76. I think I'll put 70. And for the Y max, like I said, let's go with 90. We need something bigger than 83. Let's hit graph and see if we have an intersection. Almost. We need to go a little bit further. So let's change the uh, X max to go further to the right. So let's go back and uh, I'm going to go with 100. So now we can clearly see the intersection. We can find this intersection point by hitting second trace intersect. And uh, just make sure your pointer is close to the point of intersection and hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. So this is the number that will have to be translated into a year. Since 51 corresponds to the year 2051, the answer is B. Number three, Boyle's law states that states... <coughs> Number three, Boyle's law states that the pressure of a gas is inversely proportional to the volume of the gas at a constant temperature. The table gives the volume V in milliliters of gas for a selected pressure P. Which of the following gives a model for the volume of the gas as a function of pressure? Note, if Y is directly proportional to X, then that means Y equals K times X, where K is a constant. If y is inversely proportional to x, then y is equal to k divided by x, where k is a constant. We are told that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. So v is equal to k divided by p, where k is a constant. That matches c or d, so that means the answer is not a or b. To choose between C or D, let's pick an input value and evaluate the expression and see if we get the correct output value. For example, if the answer is going to be C, that means the volume at 137.5 would be 11.458 divided by 137.5. The question is, is this even close to this? Well, we're dividing 11 point something by 137 point something. So this is much smaller than 1 and nowhere near 12. So the answer cannot be C. Option D makes more sense. If we evaluate this formula, at 137.5, then this would equal 1650 divided by 137.5. So we have a much bigger number in the numerator than the denominator, so it makes sense that this might be about 12. Uh, let's go ahead and put it in a calculator and see what we get. Kabam! The answer is D. Number four, an x-ray machine is used to eliminate germs in certain food processes. The intensity I in millirads per hour of x-rays produced by the machine is inversely proportional to the square of the distance D in meters from the machine. For a certain machine, the intensity is 26.5 millirads per hour at a distance of four meters. 
Based on this information and using the same machine, what is the intensity in millirads per hour at a distance of 3.3 meters? First of all, if the intensity I is inversely proportional to the square of the distance, that means I is equal to K divided by the square of the distance, where K is a constant. Here they have given us one intensity and the corresponding distance. We can plug both of these values into this formula and solve for the constant K. So when the intensity is 26.5, so the 26.5 goes here for the intensity, this will equal K divided by the distance squared. So that's going, going to be 4 squared, which I'm going to go ahead and just put 16. Using a little bit of algebra, if we multiply both sides of the equation by 16, that will give us the solution. So I'm going to multiply by 16 on both sides. These 16s will cancel each other out, and that, that will leave us with the value of k. K is 424. Substituting this value back into our original setup gives us I equals 424 over D squared. Now we can use the complete formula to answer the question, what is the intensity at a distance of 3.3 meters? So we will just substitute 3.3 in for D. And we can just type this into the calculator. That's 38.935. So the answer is D. Number five, the table gives amounts of United States federal education spending in billions of dollars for selected years. A linear regression model is used to construct a function model, S, that models the spending in billions of dollars over the given years. If t equals 1 corresponds to 2011, t equals 2 corresponds to 2012, and this pattern continues, which of the following defines function S? So we need to enter these values into the calculator but we need to be careful about how we enter the years. Instead of 2011 through 2017, we will enter one through seven. Hit the stat button on the calculator and hit enter. If there's anything in there, go up to the top, hit clear and enter to clear it out. Now let's enter the input values in this fashion as L1, and we will enter these output values as L2. We can find the linear regression model by hitting the stat button and switching over to the calculate menu and choosing one of these linear regression models. All of the answer choices are in the form AX plus B. So, I am going to choose option 4. Before we hit enter and generate the regression model, slide down to where it says store regression equation and type in Y1 to have the calculator automatically store the regression model as Y1 in the Y equals area. So hit VARS, Y VARS, enter, and enter again. Now hit enter twice to generate the model. Okay, so this is our answer. Plugging in the values for A and B, we can see that the answer is A. Number six, Jordan's cell phone plan includes five gigabytes of data per month and has a monthly cost of $79.95. If Jordan uses more than five gigabytes of data within the month, there's a charge of $10 per additional gigabyte of data used. Function C 
is used to model Jordan's monthly cell phone bill, where D is the number of gigabytes of data used, and C at D is the cost in dollars. Which of the following defines function C? We are being asked to model Jordan's monthly cell phone bill. However, Jordan's bill will be calculated differently depending on how many gigabytes of data he uses. There are two main scenarios. Either Jordan's data usage is less than or equal to 5 gigabytes, or the data usage is greater than 5 gigabytes. The first 5 gigabytes of data are included in the flat monthly cost of $79.95. So, in this first scenario, Jordan's monthly phone service will cost $79.95. And, 95 cents. and that is exactly what is indicated by these first three options. Notice how they say that for data between 0 and 5 gigabytes, the cost is $79.95. All right, option A, B, and C all say that. We can eliminate option D, which includes an extra charge even under this scenario. Now let's talk about the second scenario where Jordan uses more than 5 gigabytes of data within the month. Jordan will still pay the $79.95 for the monthly service, which includes the first 5 gigabytes. But in addition, Jordan will pay an extra fee of $10 per additional gigabyte. Be careful, since D is the number of gigabytes, you might think that we need to add the expression 10D to the cost, you know, $10 per gigabyte. That would be wrong because the first 5 gigabytes are included in the plan and covered by the $79.95. Since Jordan only has to pay $10 per additional gigabyte above and beyond the 5 that are included, we need to subtract 5 from the total number of gigabytes. For example, if Jordan uses 7 gigabytes of data in a month, this formula would give us the original $79.95 plus $10 times 7 minus 5. In other words, Jordan is only paying an extra $10 for each of the two additional gigabytes over the 5 that are included. So the answer is A, because this is the only piecewise function that has the correct expression for both scenarios. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.